Foley. Uh, thanks for inviting us and uh, giving us the opportunity to talk here. Uh, it's a great conference. So, uh, do I have a clicker? Okay, thank you. Okay, so employee disengagement is a real thing. And it's a growing thing. And the interesting part about employee disengagement, and that is frustrating for both sides of the labor market. Both employees and business owners are frustrated. Employees usually hate their job, and business owners often complain that they cannot find motivated and uh, capable employees. And probably the reason for that is fundamental. Because we see this in all kinds of companies, all verticals, all sizes. The system that we work in, this fundamental thing that we work in, the capitalism, it's a great system. It's basically what made our civilization till here. It's the, the, the best uh, system for organizing society that we have invented so far. But the problem with capitalism is that it has one side effect. Capitalism concentrates, uh, concentrates ownership. And by ownership, I mean responsibility and accountability. So basically, the ownership is taken from the masses, let's say, and is concentrated in the few. And the problem with that is that these employees, let's say the masses, they don't have ownership, they are just resources to the business. They are just human resources. But what happens if a cheaper resource appears, more effective and cheaper resource appears? And it's not just about physical labor, it's about any, any kind of work that's concentrated in a very particular task. It's about doing something very specific and just follow the procedure. So every time it's about follow the procedure, it's probably something that's going to be automated. Because very soon our phones will be literally smarter than us. And by very soon I mean that some, uh, if, if the com uh, computational power that you can buy for $1,000 grows with the same rate, it's growing since there is computing power, uh, after all. If this uh, trend continues, sometime between 2023 and 2050, our smartphones will be literally smarter than us, and they will get exponentially smarter and smarter. And as Adam Smith defines, in, uh, uh, when he was uh, basically defining capitalism, as he states, is that the Make the, the labor, the paid labor, is actually cheaper than the slave labor. Because slaves, they are forced to work. They don't work for themselves, they are forced to work. So they don't have a reason to become innovative. They don't have a reason to become better. And since they uh, don't have these reasons, they just, uh, after all, they are, um, they are more expensive. And the last time we actually become more free, we also become more productive. So if now a cheaper resource appears and again we, let's say, lose our jobs and become more free, probably we will also become more productive again because we'll be also more free. And when this time comes, we'll all need to answer this question, which is basically what you will gonna do if you don't have to do anything. Because humans are humans, they are some, they are personalities, while machines, they are resources. And people want machine solve problems. So probably uh, we, will, we will need to answer these questions. What well, we need to do, what we want to do, if we don't have to do anything. And probably if, if we have read this question, we, we will not answer that we want to be resources, because no one wants to be a resource, actually. And probably we will want something good. Probably we will want to clean up the planet, Probably we will want to go to Mars. Probably we will want to be better humans. We'll need to answer this question. And if we don't work for each other, probably we can work with each other. Someone can come and give the idea. Someone can come and give skills. Someone can come and give capital. But nobody needs to actually own our thing. Or can we actually create a thing that's, that's not owned by someone? that is cooperatively owned uh, or autonomously owned and, and it somehow owns itself. But the problem is that 
people, the problem with that is people are not just, they don't just want, people are survivors. They, they need to survive. And in order to survive, often people break great things that we have created as civilization. Things like uh, law, things like moral, they often break it. And there is this very old problem in the game theory called the Byzantine Generals problem that basically states that these Byzantine Generals, they have occupied the city and they need to decide whether to attack the city, but they also rival between each other. So a general may lie, may say, okay guys, let's attack, and then he attacks the rest from behind and wins. So the problem is how we build a system that uh, basically facilitates coordinated behavior, that basically um, makes us pursue a common goal, but without trusting each other, between, be, 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 um, without uh, having this uh, trust and some of the participants in the system may be lying with their messages, they may be sending false messages. And this problem was uh, not solved for a very long time. It was unsolved till 1999, then was the first practical solution. But what's more interesting is that exactly 10 years ago, in the end of October 2008, this thing appears in a, a cryptography mailing list. This is uh, the announcement of Satoshi Nakamoto that he suggests this peer-to-peer -peer protocol that not only solves the Byzantine fault tolerance problem, but uh, it also uh, gives an economic incentive for the participants in such Byzantine fault tolerance network to keep the network running for a longer period than just a scientific experiment. And Bitcoin appeared. And the interesting part about Bitcoin is that actually it appeared just a month and a half after the big crisis. After the centralized economic system of the world collapsed because of this, uh, its centralization. Be because of uh, passing responsibility upwards. And what Bitcoin gives actually, Bitcoin gives uh, a legend, one magic legend. It's magic because everyone, uh, it, it's known by, it, no, no one owns it and at the same time, everyone knows it. Everyone can see what's written in the ledger, but new transactions may appear only according to the rules. And the rules are, you cannot spend money you don't have, and you can spend the same money only once. But if we take this idea one step further, uh, the thing that the second generation blockchains like Ethereum did, we can have this smart contract. So we may have a, a complex rules, a bit more complex rules, about how we can write transactions. And this is an interesting idea, and if we take it even one step further, we may define this autonomous wallet. It's a wallet that money can come in, but money can go out only according to the rules. So no one can actually take money from this wallet unless it's written in the rules, and no one can change the rules again until it's written in the rules. But let's go even one step further. And then we can create this autonomous reward system. So it's something like Monopoly or something like Catan. A, a game that you play, and in this game uh, there are rules. There are roles. Uh, there are participants. Participants have roles. They have some way to incentivize each other. They, have, they, they, they may have a way to, to reward each other, to, to take decisions. And taking decisions doesn't need to be uh, true voting. They may take decision as part of some token economy. And yeah, basically we, we may create this, this autonomous reward system as a game. But if we continue even one step further, why don't we create a whole organization as such autonomous reward system? So this will be an organization that's decentralized autonomous organization. But the the, the, the biggest question we need to answer in such an organization is, okay, we'll have contributors, these contributors will uh, come together to do this thing that we want to create together, but then how we spread the, the profit? So, okay, at one point you'll have profit and how we'll spread it? And let me suggest you one solution. <coughs> I call it high-risk automated debt. So how the high-risk automated debt works? We come together, we do work, and we peer reward each other with, with tokens. And then when uh, you, you have one token, one token equals one euro for our future, from our future profits. So when uh, profits 
start floating in the, the organization. The organization itself buys back the token and gives uh, back to its contributors. Contributors themselves, how they uh, distribute the, the token, it can be through peer-to-peer uh, -peer rewards, so they evaluate each other. It can be by crowdfunding uh, bounties. Uh, it can be uh, yeah, different kinds of peer-to-peer -peer rewards. And the interesting part is that it also works for investors. So you may have investors and say, okay, give me a loan. And it's a legal loan, as any uh, normal loan. But in addition to just returning to the loan, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you um, extra tokens. So let's say 10 times more tokens than the loan that you give me. So it's equal to, uh, let's say, uh, an exit from, um, from a startup. And actually, we did that. We implemented this model and we created an organization that works exactly on this kind of rules. And this organization is called the Comrade Cooperative. We created it beginning of 2018, this year. So now we are 10 months old. But it's interesting how an organization without an owner achieves something that's probably better than most of the startups uh, in the region. So we, we are now 43 members that are, uh, let's say, contributing to the network. Uh, to the organization, 21 of them are contributing actively, meaning that they are, let's say, daily participating in the, in the work in the organization. And we have raised so far 320,000 uh, uh, 320, uh, euro. And in our organization, in Comrade, we are working on two pillar projects. The first project is Autonomy. It's our system for creating decentralized autonomous organizations that are built with the high-risk automated debt model. Uh, it's something that's most natively applied in cooperatives, like ours, but the interesting part is that this system can be also applied in any company. So in any company, you may add this uh, DAO as an addition to the company, and um, uh, the, the DAO gets part of the profit of the company, the, but the management decides what are the participants, but once participants enter in the DAO, they self-organize and they uh, peer, uh, peer reward each other. And our second project, uh, and, and yeah, just, just about autonomy, is that uh, actually it, it's, it's a complete product. So it's something that you can go to autonomy.com. Uh, it's still in beta, so it's still not public, but you can see our GitHub. Everything is open source. But uh, in, in the spring, uh, we're going to uh, complete it. We, we just got a grant from Aragon, the biggest uh, DAO project for completing autonomy. And uh, it will be a full system, so you can go, uh, there will be a wizard. Uh, after the wizard, you will end up with smart contracts, with um, uh, legal contracts with your contributors, because everything is legal and is uh, working in the, in the existing system. And uh, you will receive also a web console, so you can interact with your, uh, with your DAO. And our second project is uh, we wanted to go one step further. So not just create uh, an autonomous organization, but also create an autonomous product. And it's Signet. It's a decentralized autonomous AI infrastructure on the blockchain. And uh, you will be able to hear more about this project later in the startup session from uh, our colleague Maya. So we yeah, uh, go there. And um, this is us. This is the Comrade Cooperative. We are not an abstraction. We are not uh, something good that will probably happen in the future. We are here and now, we are uh, these people, and uh, if you want to know us, you can go to our page, comradecoop.com, uh, you can go in our Discord channel, uh, everything is transparent, you can see all the communication that goes in the cooperative, uh, be part of it, probably join in some of the projects, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's us, and we are here and now, thank you. Thank you so much for being so good with the time. You guys are really amazing. Uh, our next uh, presenter is a doctor. And uh, he actually, uh, some of you who are here,